All right, we have more changes unfolding in the swamp of Washington, D.C. Changes that have top Democratic leaders, top Dems in the Senate, in the House, and even the VP herself is on board, coming out and admitting on national television their plan, their new plan for all 20 million undocumented immigrants, no longer hiding the bigger plan here. It's now all out in the open. In fact, it was brought to the surface. They were pushed into exposing their position because of Mike Johnson's budget proposal bill on Friday. If you weren't aware, the U.S. government runs out of money in a couple of weeks. Come October, Congress needs to come together and raise the debt ceiling again. Otherwise, it's government shutdown time. Well, the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, a Republican, just released their budget proposal. And in it, they say they will only deal... They will only agree to raise the debt ceiling if you, Democrats, and the White House agree to require voter ID in November. This is what led to the absolute insanity I'm about to show you. This is nuts. But before we get started, thank you for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps out the channel. And consider subscribing so you don't miss these regular updates. So, so one of the strangest features of American life is how we've seemed to all been accustomed or trained to ignore the things that are right in front of our face, the things that really matter, and instead turn our attention to our TikTok feeds or the latest CNN fixation, mainstream media's constant churn of pointless and nonsensical stories. You could pick any week, any week of the year, and look at the nonsense that they choose to cover, whether it be a forgettable border dispute in eastern Ukraine or the feigned outrage this week over two conservative comedians roasting Kamala Harris, CNN spending time analyzing, actually analyzing, how comedy is now hate speech or the countless other meaningless stories they spend their time on because that's the thing, it's not what they cover, it's what they choose to ignore. The only remarkable thing about this is our willingness to believe they're more important than, say, the 40,000 veterans sleeping on the street or thousands of Americans dying each week from drug ODs. Or how about the invasion happening at our southern border? How right now, today, we're living with 10 plus million new undocumented migrants in this country, 10 million new people who've entered the country illegally in the last three years. You can see it on this chart. Look what happened three years ago. See the red arrow? At the bottom right, that's when the Harris-Biden administration began processing, then releasing millions of undocumented migrants into the country, even, even changing the law so undocumented migrants can now work legally. How do you think that's going to work out, folks? There's a cause and effect to everything. There are consequences Americans are facing right now, today. The BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, just released the jobs data last week, the August jobs report. This should be one of the biggest political stories. Instead, it's being ignored. Look at this. Since October 2019, since the Harris-Biden administration took over, native-born U.S. workers, Americans, have lost 1.4 million jobs, while foreign-born workers in this country added 3 million new jobs. So in the last four years, Americans have seen negative job growth, while undocumented immigrants have gained 3 million net new jobs. And to demonstrate how dishonest our media is, Donald Trump tried to talk about this last month, tried to shine a light on this problem, and instead of the media picking the story up, all he got was ridicule. Watch how MSNBC described this to their audience. Watch this. I don't want to play too much of the former president's baseless sneers against immigrants, but to give you a sense of exactly how untethered from reality it all was, consider this. Virtually 100 percent of the net job creation in the last year has gone to migrants. You know that? Most of the job creation has gone to migrants. In fact, I've heard that substantially more than uh, Beyond the, actually beyond the number of 100 percent, it's a much higher number than that. But the uh, government hasn't caught up with that yet. More than 100 percent of job creation has gone to immigrants. How does that work? Did the immigrants bring extra jobs with them? None of it makes any sense. Again, what's really important? 
why are they gaslighting us about this story? Well, we may have the answer. This is pretty incredible. So like I said during the intro of the video, come October, the U.S. government runs out of money. Now you may be thinking, oh, how is that possible? I give them close to half my annual earnings. Yes, well, even though they collected around $4 trillion in tax revenue last year, the Harris-Biden administration decided to spend $7 trillion. $4 trillion collected, spending $7 trillion. Try to explain that to me. You run a country like a company. You're the chief executive. You're Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. You're fully aware how much money the country makes, $4 trillion. Why on earth would you choose to spend $7 trillion? Purposefully borrowing $3 trillion more than we have. Borrowing it from where, by the way? Well, a lot of it comes from China, hence our $3 trillion deficit. Let me digress. So, so Congress needs to raise the debt ceiling before the money runs out, before October. Well, each time this happens, both sides use it to leverage something that they want, especially the minority party. In this case, the Republicans. So Mike Johnson, top Republican in Congress, just released their budget proposal. In it, he says he's only going to agree to this new budget if you, Democrats, and the White House agree to national voter ID requirements before November 7th. Big deal, right? Now you're probably saying it's all talk. He knows Dems will never agree to this. It's all just theater, right? Well, theater or not, it spooked the Dems enough to completely change their public position on illegal immigration. Get this, to remove Mike Johnson's leverage, the Democrats and the White House just called his bluff. They're now coming out and admitting publicly. They're now publicly saying, telling us to our faces what they plan to do with the 20 plus million undocumented migrants in this country. Yes, I hope you're sitting down, folks. They say their goal is to move them from undocumented status to documented status. You can't make this up. Here's Chuck Schumer, top Dem in the Senate. Watch this. The only way we're going to have a great future in America is if we welcome and embrace immigrants, the dreamers and all of them, because our ultimate goal is to help the dreamers but get a path to citizenship for all 11 million or however many undocumented there are here. Not just the dreamers, but all of them. That's what he said. That's what Chuck Schumer just said, and I quote, our ultimate goal is to help the dreamers, but also create a path to citizenship for all 11 million or however many undocumented immigrants are here. So Republicans, you want national voter ID. Well, sorry, we plan on giving them all citizenship anyway. So no, this is insane and ballsy. Uh, to be honest, I'm actually impressed that they're doing this. It's refreshing to just hear them come out publicly and admit it. For years, they've skirted around the, the issue, walking on eggshells about it. For the longest time, the media would call you a right-wing extremist if you said Democrats wanted this. Well, once again, it turns out to be true. And last week, we knew something was going on after Nancy Pelosi, former Speaker of the House, said the same thing on Bill Maher, who, by the way, is a die-hard Democrat, a huge Dem donor, Bill Maher is. And even he thinks this is nuts. Watch. The California lawmakers just passed a law. I, it hasn't been signed by Governor Newsom, but giving um, government assistance to undocumented immigrants to buy houses. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a, a different place than uh, the Democratic Party used to be on immigration. Is it not? I'm not going to say that's what the country is going to do, but that's certainly where California is. Well, uh, let me just say, immigration had always been a bipartisan issue. I refer you to but the... But not free houses. Well, that's not free housing. It's, it's the American dream being available to more people. But uh, California is always in the lead. Maybe others will follow that lead, but that's up to those states. But we are very blessed here with beautiful diversity. Do you you'd vote for this law? Excuse me? So you'd vote for this law? Well, I don't, I, I'm not familiar with oh. exactly what it is, but making the... Uh, American dream of home ownership available to all people is something we have to do for people before who are here you're now. This is before, before you're a citizen. Hmm? This is undocumented. Hmm? This is for the undocumented. Well, what I would like to do is move them to documented. And here's the craziest part. They do this after gaslighting us for the last four years about what's happening at the southern border. They just allowed 
the largest mass migration of people into our country. Kamala Harris oversaw, as borders are, whatever her title was, the largest flow of new people into the country. And now at the end of these four years, after gaining 10 plus million new people, they decide to tell us, oh, and by the way, we want to give them all a pathway to citizenship. You hear politicians say this is the most important election of your life. They say it all the time, but this time, I have to agree with them. This really could turn out to be the most consequential election of our lifetime. All right, that wraps up the news portion of this video. Now let me tell you about the sponsor for today, DeFi Technologies, one of my favorite small cap growth companies. This is a tech company focused on the decentralized finance ecosystem. This company, folks, is on a rocket ship to outer space. Their stock's up 2,700% in the last year alone, 2,700% crypto expert Anthony Pompliano and I both believe this is one of the most undervalued stocks. Pomp, he's a big shareholder in this company and it's not just him. Get ready because I'm about to blow your mind in the next few minutes as I show you why I'm so bullish on this company. And for the record, I normally stay away from almost everything crypto, but this isn't a coin or an exchange, nothing like that. I think of this company as the vanguard of crypto. That's what they basically are. Now listen to this. When I first found this company around six months ago, they were trading around 50 cents per share. Then when I first mentioned them back in June, they were trading for a buck 30 a share. I told you then how I believe this company hasn't scratched the surface and that they're blowing up. Well, folks, today they trade for around two bucks a share. Between that first video and today, so around three months ago to today, they're up 70% right now. So let me just quickly add some context. DeFi Technologies, they offer ETPs, exchange traded products, just like Vanguard offers ETFs, except in the crypto space, they're called ETPs. In Europe, they call them ETPs. And they're one of the only companies who do this at scale currently. Vanguard and BlackRock are just now trying to break into the space. DeFi did it years ago. But they have what Warren Buffett refers to as a moat. All of these big guys are trying to catch up with them, but it literally takes years to get the licenses. They also have almost a billion dollars under management at present, and they generate 7% on those assets. That's like 60 million a year they earn. Then they also, by the way, earn trading fees each time someone buys or sells one of their ETPs. That's right, they earn trading fees on both sides of the trade. It's a great business model. It's like owning a toll book. First, if you look at the price of this company right now on a valuation level, I believe they still have more room to run because here's the thing. The analysts are having trouble gauging the business or measuring its intrinsic value. For example, take a listen to what the head of capital markets for DeFi said in a recent earnings call. He said he would only consider selling if someone were to offer 10 bucks a share. Listen to this. 99% of the world's companies trade at 20 times profits. We are trading at three times profits. I've said this repeatedly between you know, Ollie, Johan, friends, family, me, friends, family, and, and, you know, very, very closely related parties, we control probably 100, 120 million shares. Um, we're not, we're not looking for $3 on this stock or $4, especially in an environment that we're looking at now. We're looking at, you know, eight to 10, which, you know, sounds far fetched, but, but, you know, five, six, seven is, is where we should be trading just on a reasonable comp basis. And if you think that's interesting, take a listen to what hedge fund EMJ Capital's founder, Eric Jackson, just said about them. Watch this. I got to jump in yeah. here because I, I want to spend a little bit of time. We only have about a minute or so. Everyone dreams sure. of buying a stock that becomes the next NVIDIA, right? Now, of course, you got to buy it and yeah. hold it and, and live through the ups and downs. That's the part no one really talks about. I read when you had a conversation with your son, and you gave him these three names, right? DeFi technology, open door, and upstart as potential 20 baggers. Uh, I, I never heard of DeFi. T tell us about it. <laughs> DeFi is, a, is in the crypto space, but they, they run a bunch of ETFs over in Europe. So, and they're a small company. They're, they're less than a billion market cap. Uh, and that's one of the keys. If you want to find a 20 bagger, you got to start small. I love right. NVIDIA, but to 20 bag from 3 trillion, that's going to be tough. Right. So DeFi is, is small. It's cheap. It has something like a 3x forward price, price earnings uh, multiple versus people like Coinbase and Robinhood who have like 40x forward PEs. Yes, Eric Jackson considers DeFi technologies as a possible 20 bagger, he said. Like what? A 
possible future NVIDIA, he said. Now, look, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm with him. They are blowing up, and he goes into why he believes this. He actually followed up with that over on X with a detailed analysis. So check this out. And remember, this is coming from Eric Jackson, the founder of EMJ Capital. He published this long post titled The Next Carvana, Why I'm Long DeFi Technologies. He writes, if you use 250 million shares and management's implied but not official 2024 earnings number of 132 million with a 39 X forward multiple and include the 70 million in net cash, you get a current implied share price today of $20.87 a share instead of the buck 60 suggesting the stock is currently valued at 1 13th its fair market value, unquote. 20 bucks a share, he says. Well, he's clearly bullish on DeFi. Now, I'm not counting on that kind of crazy valuation, but I do believe they're just getting started. I believe the company's a cash cow. They're taking in real returns. If you look at their financial disclosures, I think it's a great company. I'll put a link to their website in the description of the video. Make sure to do your own due diligence. I'm only providing some of the info about their company and their products. All right, that wraps up this video. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.